Ooh, stream is live. All right. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Typical Skeptic Podcast. I have another fascinating guest with me today. I met my uh, next guest today off of Facebook. I put out a, uh, a request for, you know, um, psychic readers, you know, because I like to have a, enough psychic readers throughout the month because I like to have on multiple readers. And uh, this woman responded, so she, but she's much more than a psychic reader. Like, we're going to get into that today. Um, I have with me Anne Marie, the healer. She's a multidimensional metaphysical healer, channel, ordained minister, and spiritual mentor. Her journey as a metaphysical healer began when she went through a soul reset and became aware of universal energy. Spirit led her to become a Reiki master in 2015. Since then, her healing has moved beyond traditional Reiki. While healing, she channels light language, ascended master, galactic, and angelic beings. They often direct her hands, energy, and assist her as she facilitates the clearing of stagnant energy that causes energetic blocks in the human body excuse me by re removing these energetic blocks vital life force energy can flow unencumbered the clear flow of energy produces creativity and vitality her mission is to assist you to realize the whole divine being you are and her website is www.annemariethealing.com and i'd like to give her a big warm welcome to the show Anne marie thanks for coming on for the first time how are you I'm great. And thank you so much, Rob, for bringing me on. Um, I'm just thrilled to be here. We've been watching your podcast for quite a while. Yeah. And I just want to say that, um, you know, like uh, you, I was witness to like some of the work you do right before the show. And I actually just talking to you about my issue. I don't know if like what you did was like loosen up, like, you know, tense energy that was in my solar plexus area. Like all my fans know about my ongoing problem that's been going on. But like, I can tell that you were able to do something because it feels better already like so i believe you definitely have like some kind of like healing power you know i can see that because i have friends who are energy healers too and they, everybody's able to take the pain away but then it, for some reason it comes back and i have a feeling that has something to do with like some kind of like an ongoing emotional issue i have or something i don't know you know but um you, you know like but, but you were able to take it away is what i'm saying so i thank you thank you so much for doing that you know well, like you're welcome. I mean, it's a it's a facilitation because uh, I I am able to manipulate energy, um, but because you allowed it to happen, it really was you. It really was you just letting you know. Everything starts and ends with the individual person. So I'm able to go in and assist you, um, but the maintenance that's up to you. So that's kind of why things go up and down in the world. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm honored and, and happy that I was able to assist in, in clearing out a little bit of the dense energy. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Now, now let's talk about this. Like, how did you get started in all this? Like, what were you always uh, psychic or like when, when did you first start noticing you were psychic? And then when did you have your spiritual awakening that kind of brought you into all this stuff? Well, it, it's interesting. The word psychic, I just recently added that to my list um, because uh, we all have interpretations of words and words are very limiting. But to answer your question fully, um, about uh, 12 years ago, I had a total and I put it in my bio as being a soul reset. So I was I had been married for over 20 years. I was in a great career. And year after year after year, something happened to completely fracture my interpretation of my reality. So by the end of like five years, starting with like my father passing away, then I had a miscarriage, then my marriage broke up, then I lost my job, then I lost my life savings. And then um, my still husband, but we were separated, got a woman pregnant, which like made me lose my mind, like literally lost my mind. I was at ground zero, bottom of the pit of despair, suicidal, the whole nine yards. It was awful. Um, but as, as many people will tell you, that's what you need to go through in order to finally build yourself back up. And not only 
was that happening to me, but I was always very Catholic. <laughs> I grew up in a very Catholic family and I believed in like the paranormal. So I used to have a lot of paranormal experiences all throughout my life. So I kind of like when when I uh, separated from my ex, I, I needed to find out who the hell I was because I didn't know who I was. I wasn't a wife anymore. You know, my kids were older. I, I didn't know anything. So I started to open myself up by going to like paranormal meetups. And um, like I said, I had lost my got laid off from my job. I was an art teacher. Yes, I got sir. a question. What, what 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 kind of paranormal experiences were you having as a kid? It might be important to talk about that. They're like the lead up to think you got your interest in this. Like was yeah. it like ghosts or shadow people or what? what it was what it of? was actually demonic interference. Like I when I was fourteen, I had my first Ouija experience with a person who was a full blown, uh, full blown clairvoyant medium. And she used to go into trance and we used to do the Ouija board and she would go into trance. And I was told that I controlled the spirits. So I was given this job or whatever, but I felt an attached energy pretty much. Um, and I, my dad, you know, I grew up in a very Catholic family, but my dad was like, like to watch the 700 club. And I don't know if anybody um, remembers the seven or it's still on the air. I remember but, that. It was real religious, right? It was real religious. It was very Christian. And they talked, and this is going to date me, <laughs> um, but it was when um, Poltergeist came out. Poltergeist. I remember Poltergeist. Let's that was see. such a great movie. That was a great movie. I remember that. Don't go yeah. into the lie. You know, so anyway, yeah. um, he, this guy who the, his name was Ben Kinslow. I remember it to this day. He literally did an exorcism. Uh, right at the end of this like review for this movie. And um, I freaking got exercised right there in my kitchen. I mean, I was, I was 14 and I was crying and I felt this tingling come off my body. Um, but I got did was it, it, you know, when you start to delve into these things and you kind of like put up a flare, you send a flare up into the lower fourth astral, which now I understand what that is. And um, it kind of marked me, I think. And uh, but anyway, throughout most of my young, young, not so much during my young adult life, but definitely when I got married and uh, had my first child, I was being bombarded by a lot of like supernatural experiences, things being um, uh, like moving into different planes of existence. Like one minute I'm looking for a suitcase, the next minute it's not there. Then like a week later, it shows up in the middle of my bed. Like, like you got moved like by the fair or something happened. like that. Like you got moved like it somewhere. And my youngest son, when he was a year and a half old, now a year and a half old, they don't know nothing, right? But he was getting attacked with night terrors. And even to this day, he's a grown man now. And he would say, he's like, yeah, I was like three. I was like, no, you were a year and a half. He goes, I remember being grabbed by my ankles. So this was going on a lot in my life. And I was always interested in the supernatural and the fringe um, so I just started to explore that anyway. Um, when I finally had this kind of like, there is no God moment, um, <laughs> which happens about, I don't know. Now it's been about 10 years ago. There is no God, like it doesn't exist. Jesus doesn't exist. I mean, that lasted for like a day <laughs> because, um, I used to sing in church and I used to be a very good singer. I was a music director, cantor. I even cantored at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. So I wow, was up on really the altar. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it was my life. It really was my life. And I kind of said, you know, I need Jesus. And I, I need, I love Jesus. Whether or not the religion worked doesn't matter, but I need Jesus in my life. And shortly thereafter, I found a beautiful spiritual practice where this woman was channeling Jesus and she introduced me to something called A Course in Miracles, 
which is a beautiful personal spiritual practice. It's not a religion, but it is a channeled book by Jesus. And so I'm very glad to say that I channel the energy of Jesus. I believe he's one of my guides and I have a beautiful relationship with that energy. Um, but uh, to, to tell you about my healing thing, uh, I was laid off from my job. It's kind of a cute little story. Um, long story short, um, I got a, a pet psychic reading for this new kitten that I had just rescued. And uh, I wanted to know if the cat was okay. You know, he's in a, she's in a new home and whatever. And so the pet psychic said to me, the cat's telling me you're a healer. And I said, I'm a healer. And she said, yeah, uh, do you do Reiki? And I said, what's a Reiki? I had no idea what Reiki was. I was Catholic. I don't know what Reiki is. And uh, within, within a week of that reading, uh, a woman who I had met um, opened a metaphysical shop and offered a Reiki one class. And even I knew at that point, I think I'm meant to take this class. And so really, it just changed my life completely. I understood it. I felt it. I lived it. And then um, I began to channel light language about seven years ago. And um, that's when the healing kind of took this turn. And I've developed my own kind of system where I go through your chakras and I feel the energy in the chakras and I channel messages and I... Um, kind of do my own thing right now. So that's that's where I came to doing what I'm doing right now. That's fascinating. So how did you start channeling the Raw Collective and who's the Raw Collective? All right. So the Raw Collective came into my, I, I, I first started channeling light language and I started my YouTube channel then. Um, and then I started to channel um, my previous guides called the highway guides because I'd literally be driving to work and I would channel my guides and I'd record my videos and put them out on YouTube. And I loved them. They were great. Well, I made a change in my life. I decided to leave education because I was an art teacher and I knew I wasn't into that energy anymore. And I I just couldn't, I couldn't be a part of that system because we all know what kind of system it is. It's a system of control, et cetera. So when I decided to get out of education and literally move to where I am now, um, my guidance changed and they came in, they came in and said, uh, you, um, you know, basically we would like to introduce ourselves to you. We are the raw collective and we are your new guides. And I'm like, I didn't know who they were. Uh, I had no idea who the Ra Collective, I knew that there was a sun god in Egypt called Ra, but I didn't know who they were. It turns out that the Ra is the same Ra that channeled the law of one back in the 80s. I was just going to say that. Yeah, I was going to say, does yeah. this have anything to do with the law of one? Because I, I had a, my ex-girlfriend was really into the law of one. She loved the law of one. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, I, I bought her a, a law of one t-shirt. So like I kind of got into the law of one as well. It's it's an amazing teaching. It's uh, It really is. Yeah. So um, this is yeah, amazing. It is so, so yeah. How, yeah so, <laughs> So, so, how, so what, how did it transpire from then? Like what, what, so you just started becoming in touch, more in touch with these beings or. Well, they kind of, they, they were very different than my previous guides. They have informed me that they will continue to be my guidance because now that I have kind of like put myself into this work uh, with all my heart, mind and soul um, that this is what I'm meant to do. So it's kind of like I've got the Raw Collective and I've got Jesus uh, working with me. I've also uh, started to uh, a course to become a licensed clinical hypnotherapist um, with um, a, uh, a, a school that's licensed by the state of Florida where I live in. So it's going to take my regression work. I already do regression be, you know, beyond quantum healing. And um, I do my own kind of shamanic journey work. I call it a shamanic journey. Um, 
but this is going to take me to a whole other level because I'm really going to understand this, the subconscious mind and I'm learning so, so much. So that's where I am in my, my journey right now. Um, I'm in school for more stuff, but it's wonderful. It, that's awesome. And, and guys, we're going to do uh, readings here soon. So if you guys want to start putting your, mm -hmm. your questions, like in the, in the chat, you can, you can start doing that. Um, if you have questions about anything Anna Marie does, or if you want a reading, you know, go ahead and put mm -hmm. your question in the chat and I'll get to it. And, uh, and yeah, and, and we'll start with that here coming up soon. But um, what I was going to say was tell us a little bit more about your healing process. Like, um, it's, mm -hmm. you said you up, the, 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 the channel often directs your hands energy yeah. and you, you clear the chakras like that. Is that, can you explain that a little bit more? And that, that sounds really interesting. Sure. Sure. So uh, the way that I begin everything, um, we set the intention of the healing, uh, you know, surround ourselves with love and light and uh, set the intention for the healing. Then I go through and I measure the chakras with a pendulum and then each chakra I kind of bring to me and I feel it in my hands and I feel it in my body. And uh, then my hands start moving and they start doing all these different things. And over the course of my work, I've kind of interpreted them uh, to mean certain things. Um, this kind of choppy motion, my hands do this a lot, that kind of like clears a lot of the cords eyes that we create. When we go through traumas, we create cords and then sometimes they grow and they feed on our, we, uh, they, they, they create such like a, a, a congestion effect. And so energy gets cleared out. Um, sometimes I'll tap into either past life. So I'll automatically say, no, this is not from this incarnation. This is a past life. Um, I remember one time, hey, everybody in the chat, I'm seeing y'all. Nice to see you. So, I mean, one time this uh, young girl, she was like maybe in her late teens and her mom sat down in front of me. I like to do these expos here in Florida. And um, I just started saying things and the, the, they were like looking at each other like, what is, you know, so I was like hitting nail upon nail upon nail. nail. And when I got to her neck, I felt that she was decapitated and I started to get these visions and I was like, you were a soldier and you refused to, it was like world war one. You were a soldier and you refused to, um, to do what you were ordered to do. And so they decapitated you and this, they were just, their eyes went, so wide. And at the end of the healing, the, the, uh, the young girl said, I have a problem with a disc in my neck that no one's been able to figure out what it is. And it's affecting my digestion. And when I went to her stomach before that, I was like, oh, um, they're happy. Your, uh, your stomach is happy with what it's, you're feeding it. So apparently she had just started a new diet and it was working for her, but she was having a lot of trouble because of something that was going on in her neck. And I had no idea. I had no clue. This was told to me at the very end. So that's why I started to say psychic, because why not? You know, <laughs> if I'm tapping into these kind of in, this kind of information, um, I mean, that's that's kind of why I started doing that. Okay. <laughs> so. I, I had my mic muted. Um, I just, I was, uh, I was going to say, so do you feel like, like a lot of the times you mentioned these cords and stuff that like, mm -hmm. that, that, that grow on us from trauma. And I think that's really important to address because like, do you mm -hmm. feel like a lot of times like those can turn into disease if they're not addressed properly? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, 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 it's originated. So there's a couple things that can happen. So you can come in with something, you can come in with the trauma that you're meant to resolve in this lifetime. And that trauma will manifest as an agreed upon, and I say agreed upon with your higher self, uh, situation that you can't solve or something similar to that. And then there are other ones that you generate yourself. Okay. 
We are in the densest, most difficult planet in the, in the solar system, bar none, okay? This assignment, human Earth assignment, is, is really, 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 really tough because we, we really don't know the power of our own mind and we don't understand how our thoughts really create our reality. So we're just used to bitching and moaning and we're used to blaming and we're used to all these things that we've been taught to do. We've been taught it by our families. We've been taught it by society. We've been taught by religion, by school, et cetera. And we're taught to suppress and we're taught to literally ignore our feelings and our thoughts. So most definitely we can create and, and the way that I see it is weeds like brambles and weeds and an overgrown forest <laughs> of, of things that need to be cleared out, that need to just be cleared. So um, that's a little bit about what you experienced. And this is what I tap into when I feel these things. So what my guides do is they come in and they literally chop it out. They chop it down, they chop it down, they chop it down. And usually I'll get some sort of insight as to why this is happening so that you don't recreate it, right? Because we have to really learn how to discipline our minds and we don't. And our, our minds are really pre-programmed. Yeah, I saw something to slap ourselves around, right? Uh, to really beat ourselves up. Um, it happens to me. It happens to all of us. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. That, that really is. Um, well, um, should we start and we could, we could take a couple of readings and, and, uh, what do, what do you think? Or, or is that, let me ask you this before, but, but before we get into that, is there anything that you want to cover about what you do with the audience, but that I might have not asked you that like, that you think is important before we start into the readings? No, I mean, I, I think everything is there. If you have any more questions, just go on to my website and everything is there. I did want to tell you, I don't know, Rob, if you've uh, put two and two together, but you've had my partner on your show a few times. Is, is your yeah. partner Daryl James? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so awesome. I thought so. I didn't I didn't want to ask because I didn't want to be like, um, you know, uh, what's the word? I didn't want to be intrusive, but I saw the picture of you guys on Facebook and I was like, is that Daryl? Like, I, I was like, I didn't know, you know, I love Daryl. He's so awesome. You know what I mean? Like we, we did a show recently on rumble. I put it on my rumble and it got a lot of views. Like that, I've been doing a lot of SSP type interviews on there, but yeah, I, I love, I love the heck out of Daryl. He's amazing. You know, He's, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that though. I, I had no clue. Yeah, um, I've been a part, however, I've been a part of the Disclosure community for years, for maybe seven years now, actively a part of the Disclosure community. And I have been in this community and watching your guests and all that for so many more years than I even knew him. So I like to say that I was a part long before he was so <laughs> do, 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 do you do you have experiences yourself or do you feel like you're involved in some way do you do you, do you did you ever have a ufo experience or anything like that um i had one experience that i would say was an artificial uh kind of like an energy beam attack um so i was uh i was laying in bed and this was after i was already channeling and when I do my work, my body moves. I've always been shaken up with energy. Um, and then this one particular time I was laying in bed and it, and it was literally a mechanical tractor beam. It hit my head and it was, brrr, it was buzzing and buzzing and buzzing and buzzing. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. It was, it was like, ah, uh, this is not of God. This is not of the light. This is not of the light. And so I repeated my mantra which was, I am love, I am light, I am joy, I am peace, I am. So I repeated that over and over and over, and it it and it um, disconnected. Um, but on on another note, um, I I believe I have aspects um, on the same planet that Daryl went to, which is kind of why we got together. Oh, so, yeah. is that on Mars or is that like, I can't remember exactly. No, on um, ERA. 
in oh you know, on air yeah 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 he was, okay yeah because that's right he has uh experiences mm -hmm. with like the Tigetan pleiadians right yeah. Woo, they're shaking me up yep 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 yeah that's you got those god goosebumps right so there that, that must be a, a sign that it did that's like that's for real you know yeah, yeah that's it interesting. was it, i i listened to his um I listened to the two interviews he did with James Rink, and then I listened to the Journey to Truth interview. And somewhere along there, he said Tigetta and Pleiades. And I had this gush of light language that just came out of me, that crying, like sorrow, light language. And it was so strong. I was like, obviously, I've got a connection with this guy. I've got to talk to him. So... We, we, we were friends for a while. And then I happened to move like the way the universe works. I just moved an hour north of him in Florida. Like he could have been from Timbuktu, but he happened to live an hour away from where my mother lived. So it was like, this is too weird. And uh, then the, we kind of, the rest is history. And we've been together for over three years now. Oh, wow. That's so awesome. Congratulations. That's really cool. And I was going to say, like, just as far as like his, his, uh, his story, go, I mean, like his experience, I, th I feel like it's very like authenticated. You know what I mean? Like there's some people in the SSP. I'm like, well, this is hard to believe, but Daryl has military experience and he's like, you know, he, he's very credible. I feel, you know what I mean? I, I just, I, I always love, I always appreciate having Daryl on the show and he's a, he's an amazing person. Like, you know, but, um, so, so yeah, that's, that's really cool. So, okay. So I'll start with some of these, uh, questions here and, uh, I'm, I'm going to go back in the, um, wait a minute, I'm going to try to find it in the chat here. I'll try to find the first one. Um, Okay, this one's from Arizona Raven, and you'll, you'll see them come up on the screen. So you can, they'll, 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 uh, they'll, they'll come up. She, this is Arizona Raven. She says, Emory, if you'd like to read me, I'm open for that. And then she said whatever she needs to do. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. I see that. So let's tune in. Arizona Raven. Crown's good. Third eye. Is this throat? Is this throat chakra? Where's the throat chakra? Throat chakra is constricted. Third eye. Third eye is wide open. No worries about that. I'm feeling throat, throat chakra constriction. How about the heart? Okay, something's going on there too. Solar plexus. That's much, much more open. I feel there's a lot going on in the throat, in the heart chakra. All right, sacral and root. Root's good. So maybe interesting that you coughed. I love yeah, it. I know. It's like I'm getting the energy or something. We don't really understand how interconnected we truly are with each other. When we create this sacred bond, like I've, I'm already connected with you, Robert, from earlier. Now we're connecting in there. So we, we have to understand that, that we are really, truly interconnected. So I'm, I'm just feeling like there's a lot of like angst and 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 confusion anger going on over here please tell me if that's resonating with you okay hun <laughs> let me I'll, I'll scroll the bottom of the room all right well i just felt it release i just felt it release out and now this kind of movement that i'm doing is like they're creating space they're creating space creating space so that means to me that you, you kind of need to move on with something, all right? Create space for the new because there was just a lot of like kind of really harsh kind of energy in there, a lot of anger energy. So open that up. She said she felt it release. Thank you. I'm glad. So now my solar plexus is kind of like tightening up as well. Okay. 
And that just released right now too. All right. So I do feel a, 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 a release in energy and that now the energy that's going all the way up uh, the shashamna, your your spinal column is really, really free and open right now. It's really free and open. I'm feeling a very vast, huge energy that dwells with you. Okay, so you have a lot of beautiful energy that's around you. Just be aware of what I was talking about in the beginning. Okay, be aware of your words. Be aware of the love that you reflect back to yourself, okay? Our words are so, 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 so important. And I feel that, no, 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 yeah. I felt that there was like a lot of kind of like negativity cycles, whether it be directed towards other people, it doesn't matter, okay? Because we are all one, okay? So even if you are directing something out to somebody else, Remember that it's a reflection of you. It's a reflection of you. And um, just be aware of that. Okay. And and seek peace and healing within your heart. That's it. Wow. That's a great. That was great. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, this next one is from the Andromedan. And he says, uh, I'll put it up on the screen. And he says, uh, hi, Anna Marie, if you could read me, I'm open for permission from my higher selves. Also, <laughs> if I, I want my Andromeda Collective have any messages for me in my journey, he says. We are here for you, brother. We are here for you. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. It is wonderful for us to communicate at this moment through this channel to you, dear brother. Mm. <laughs> How's it going down there? <laughs> <laughs> we are so happy to be able to communicate to you. You think that because we are beings from another galaxy that we have to be all stern and stiff and very proper. It is not always so. You must understand that joy is the mm, predominant energy of our realm. For our particular uh, um, species, race, being, whatever you want to call it, we dwell in love and light. And in love and light, there is joy. Do not forget to embody that down here, dear beautiful brother. Do not forget to do so. We love you. We love you very, very, very much. And it is not always so stern and weird. We can be joyful. We can uh, be in the sense that we are mm, dwelling in a completely different perspective. You have great amounts of judgment on your earth plane, great amounts of judgment. You think we are meant to behave in certain ways. But when you are coming from the perspective of the seventh dimension, you do not worry about these things. You are in a state of love and non-judgment and bliss and happiness and joy. And it makes us joyful to be able to give this message to you, to give this message to all of humanity at this time. Do not feel that you are, oh, let us say, um, uh, required to behave in a very uh, stern and prim and proper way. No, be joyful, be happy. That is the point of your incarnation. The point of your incarnation is to learn how to be joyful. It is not to learn how to be judgmental. It is not to learn how to uh, merely just navigate. You are meant to fly. <laughs> you are meant to... Uh, float and you do so because of joy and you do so because of love. No other reasons, dear beautiful one. No other reasons. We love you. Okay. <laughs> wow. That was amazing. I hope that resonates with you, Andromeda. And that was like, it just came through. Like we, we that, that can, like it kind of came out of nowhere. That was amazing. Like that was, uh, <laughs> thank you. That was great. That was great. Um, Okay, I'll get to the next one here. And uh, some people are a bunch of people are asking for. So we'll try to get to them. We have we have some time, guys. So we'll, you know, um, 
Okay, we'll go to, I'm just going to go down the line. If you need your question answered right away, you can always super chat or you can PayPal me or, do, you know, donation to the channel. That that gets that, so it helps me see the question a little bit easier. But uh, let me see here. Um, this one's from Dean Thorpe. Dean says, question, any message for me would be most welcome and appreciated. Thank you. All right. Um, automatically, Dean, I'm feeling that you have something a little bit more going on in your physical body. If you wouldn't mind uh, either confirming or denying that, but just right off the bat, I'm like, there's something going on in the body. And um, I just want to <laughs> double check that because I'm getting like twisted now and, and constricted. Can you <laughs> confirm or deny that, Denise, Dean? And then we can, we can kind of and it's in the lower abdominal area i'm getting like around the the waist like around the waist idea whether it be like intestinal in something intestinal or something either there in the sacral area and it's like radiating down your legs, I'm feeling. <laughs> he said day before yesterday. What does that mean, honey? I don't know. Maybe, maybe he had a problem day before yesterday. I don't know. Um, well, that's where I'm being guided. I'm being guided to the lower hip area, to the hips, uh, to the... Oh, he said... Area. He had said some had some kidney. kidney. Yeah, back. you can see. All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Now my feet are like literally flitting out from me. So what I'm feeling here is that uh, again, um, something is being, is not, it's not releasing. Something is not releasing from your energy field. Okay. And it's down around the back of your hips, like maybe a little bit lower than the kidneys because the kidneys are kind of like high up in the back, but I'm feeling it more further low down, uh, really more around hip area. You said foot. All right. Well, let me just, can we just like release it for him and see if you can figure it out eventually? I'm sorry. My, my readings kind of like take a little bit of time and concentration. That's fine. So yeah, I'm feeling really a lot of dense energy around your feet area now too. It's like trying to get down, trying to get down. Let's look at the, um, Earth star chakra. <laughs> so you're going to have to do a little bit of homework and um, kind of like look look into. Hold on. Do a lot of visualization of literally like your feet growing roots. Because I feel there's such a disconnection between the lower energies in your body and the earth itself. Make sure you get out. Make sure you move around. It goes without saying that grounding is super duper important. But I'm thinking that there needs to be a lot more energetic connection with the earth, if that makes sense. Um, and, you know, these are so it's built up over time so something that is built up over time it, it, it requires a little bit of your your homework so this is this is my advice to you is to just sit in quiet outside try and get your feet on the ground do a little bit of visualization energy uh, bringing energy down in through your body and then seeing it like literally drag out whatever doesn't serve you like a sludgy thing and just let the earth take it out from the bottoms of the soles of your feet. And then that will release whatever it is that's happening and you'll be able to receive and energy will flow a lot better. And that's the best I can do for you. Um, 
in this platform. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, and 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 but well, we're going to keep going here. But like, just to give people like an idea now, like if they want to get a reading or healing services from you, like how can they do that? Like, what what's the best way to get a hold of you? Like, what's the best way to book with you and stuff like that? Yeah, just go to my website and send me a message, and uh, we'll work it out. So all the prices are there. Everything, all the information on the services that I provide are there, uh, and a detailed description. And I put that in the description. Oh, I'm sorry. I put that in the description of the video, guys. So you guys can check that out. It's uh, it's mm -hmm. it's AnnaMarieHealing.com. And Anna Marie, uh, Art of Healing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Art of Healing. Sorry. Yeah. This mm -hmm. next one's a super chat. Thank you, Jonathan. This is from Pushing Buttons. He says, uh, hi, Anne Marie. I would love to get an energy reading. Thank you very much, he says. Pushing Buttons. Is this a, a, a male? I'm yeah, he's, his name's Jonathan. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. Your upper chakras are very open. I don't like when I'm in your upper chakras, I'm feeling like vastness. So that's pretty awesome. All right. So I'm feeling some energy in your back. So when usually when I feel energy in the back, it tells me that it's like a past life. Okay, or an ancestral thing that you are are dealing with. I'm feeling wings actually. I'm feeling like a wing energy. I'm also feeling some density around uh, the lower half of your legs. All right, now this is going to sound like so super ridiculous, but I've encountered it before. And I feel it is kind of like the same in your energy. So you were actually around before the fall of man. So you were a winged creature, whether you were an avian being, whether you were an angelic being, whatever, but literally your, your wings were clipped and you are grounded. You are grounded here. So what I'm feeling is that yeah you've got something that's like literally keeping you from flying again and so this is going to require like an attachment removal and you know something that i do do i do work with with attachment and energy removal and entity removal and exorcisms i do all of that stuff so that's kind of what i'm feeling for you so you're you're an extraordinary being that is being kept down and I can't really do it at this platform, but uh, you know, I've I've already been told that if anybody wants to mention typical skeptic, I'll give you uh, ten percent off. Wow, that's awesome, guys! I would take advantage of that because, um, you know, I've already got a message in the chat that people said that your 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 services are really legit, Anna Marie. Like, oh, it, it, I don't know if you saw that. She didn't want me to say it out loud, but I'm just going to say yeah. it. She said, someone said in the chat that you, you, they felt like when you were doing your reading on them, that it felt like super, really Thank powerful. You. So, so this Thank is amazing. So, and that's, a, I think for Jonathan, that's amazing because he, 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 that means he was some kind of being in like, you know, we, some past yeah. life or something, you know, like that's, that's really cool to know, you know? You know, we've, we, we are filled, those of us in our community, people who are listening, you guys don't understand that you guys are sent here. Okay. Either you've been sent here or you're, you're at the point of self realization. You're understanding who you truly, truly, truly are. And we are greater than anything we have any concept of because we are just so, 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 so trapped in our bodies. It's not even funny. So yeah, we are all incredible beings. We have yeah, no idea yeah. who we truly are. Yeah, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah, it's uh, it's like it's like. Uh, do you think we 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 kind of incarnate and, and we like like we, we we like lower like what we do you think we were all like something oh. greater like before we came? Oh in my here? god! Like, yes. Oh my god! Yes, 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 yes. So if you ever saw those Russian nesting dolls, you know, yeah, uh, uh, we we are our incarnation is the center one. And we're really like way huge, light, beautiful beings. And um, even those of us who have uh, gotten trapped up in the karma of this planet, it, 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 it's really just a, a, a fraction of truly who we are. Because I do believe we are as great 
as source. We are God beings incarnate. So, you know. Yeah. Um, I'll get to this next one. Uh, this next one is from the Andromedan. And yeah. he says, he, he asked a question already, but he super chatted. So I figured I would, and, and, you okay. know, I when, he says, hi, Henry, do I have any connections with the SSP? Do you see him have anything connections with the SSP? I generally don't like do that kind of stuff. I can ask the pendulum since we've already connected our energies. Uh, does Andromedan have any connection with the secret space program? Okay. And it's saying yes. So I think if I, he's asking that, he probably already knows, right? I mean, like know. he, I mean, you already know. Yeah. Uh, it, the reason why I don't get into that is because I think it's a disservice and it really needs to come from you understanding you. So if you get it out of like, let's say a regression, or if you're having visions, if that's entering your life in that way, then that to me is, is the way you understand these things. Not if like, I'm a channeler and I'm like, oh, I see you on a ship. Well, fuck, we could all be on a ship, you know. That's, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. that's okay. I mean, at least you're real about it. You know, you, you know, I like that. That I like that more than someone who would say, oh, you're definitely on a ship. You know, like you're telling the truth. That's, that's I, I would I never, uh, for me, for me in my practice, I would never, ever, 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 ever do that. It, it, it is not my role. I will tell you what I see, you know, but it's up to you to discern. It's up to you. Um, it's up to you to do your own research. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we'll do a couple more because we've been going about 46 minutes. I have a show to do after this. So we'll do a couple more here. This one's from Audra. She just says okay. her name's Audra and she says general reading, please. And she says, thank you. All right, Audra. Nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, all right, so I'm already getting some inter. I feel like like an interference, or I'm feeling like a dense energy around the crown area, uh, and around the third eye area. <laughs> but I feel it's stemming from confusion. I feel it's stemming from confusion. I've got some throat energy. Now, it seems like they're reinforcing you with some codes, your throat chakra. Yeah, so a lot of density around the throat area. The the, the kind of upper area is is uh well it's it's cleared, it's opened up a little bit more right now because but I felt it stemmed from a confusion. Um something confusing that you're just not understanding, or um something came into your life that kind of like knocked you a little bit off kilter. And it's causing this kind of like, who am I kind of thing? What's real? What's not real? Which is very, very fair because listen, we're being bombarded with so much crap. I mean, a lot of crap. So take a deep, beautiful breath, Audra, and let things sit with you. There's nothing wrong with seeking your truth, but I'm feeling like there's like almost like this frenetic kind of confusion energy that's just like, just let it go. Just let it, let it sit, like put it on a shelf, let it sit there for a minute, be at peace, remember who you are, remember you are greater than anything that anybody can throw at you. And when you feel up to it, you'll be able to process whatever it is that is coming your way. So that's as far as I got, and I'm not being drawn to do anything else with you. So that's, that's it. That's well, that's a good one. I mean, that was a good, it was really well said though. I mean, okay. This one's from Selena. And uh, I just always like to say this Selena is one of the people that always has the ability. She's a healer as well. She, she mm -hmm. always heals me as well. So she's a natural healer. She's a natural psychic. Beautiful. So she's, she just wants to know any messages for her or love okay. in general. Or, or, right. or, and she says, thank you. 
Okay. We are raw. We are the raw collective. And what a joy and a pleasure it is to communicate with all of you beautiful souls today. We are taking the opportunity to give a, a little bit of a message to this beautiful soul. Dear beautiful one, whether you are understanding of this or not, you are part of the avians. You are a blue avian being. Whether or not this resonates with you, we would like to introduce it to you at this time. We come to you with a beautiful connection. You were with us when we walked the planet. When we were here interacting with the societies in what you call ancient Egypt and what you call ancient Maya, you were part of it. You were one of us at this time. So here we are to confirm that to you. Here we are to awaken a beautiful love connection between your energy and ours. And you may consider us guidance of you as well. We love you. This is our message to you. And we wish to remind all of you on this plane at this time, you are definitely more than you know. You are... The entire universe is looking towards Earth because you have been the volunteers and the chosen ones to actually go through this ascension event, to be the, the stones upon which the new pyramids will be, birthed, be built. This is our message to you. We understand that there is a time constriction, but we are raw. We are the raw collective. We are the bringers of the law of one. We are the ones to remind humanity that in true love form, there is no separation. We love you. That's amazing. That's amazing. So well, should we do one more? Should we Should we do one? What do you think? Like, I'll it's just pick you. someone it's random. Show, honey. I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. We'll, we'll do, uh, we'll do one or two more, and then we'll, because uh, I, I want everybody to get. Let me see. Uh, I didn't realize this many people were going to ask for uh, a reading. I, I, let me see here. Okay, so this one's from the Natural Sentient. I'm lucky. I have a really good audience. They're real. They're really great people. They really all are. Yeah. And she says, "Hi, Anne Marie. I'm open for a reading. You have my permission. Any message is greatly appreciated." And she says, "Thank okay. you." Thank you. <laughs> well, guess what? We are the Fey Kingdom. We are so excited to communicate to you. Yes, this dear one is also a part of our world. The Fey Kingdom, the kingdom of the fairies and the gnomes and all the beautiful little beings that are just outside of your realm. Just us, just a smidge. You could reach out and touch us. We are here to uh, remind this beautiful one that is inquiring, uh, not to forget about us. Uh, we want you to connect on a more conscious basis with your fairy friends because we do dwell around you and we love you. And we know that you know we are there. We know that you interact with us, but we want more. You must understand that we are not let us say, galactic beings or angelic beings. We are earthbound energies. We have different uh, interactions with you than all these highfalutin spiritual things that you like to communicate with. No, no, no. We are of the earth and we are of a realm and of an uh, era uh, that also interacted with this planet earth the era of the giants, the era of um, the dragons. Do not forget us in your interactions with, let us call the supernatural. So here we are. We are here to make our presence known. We are here to say that we play with your curls. We play with you. We love to poke you. We love to prod you. And we visit you from time to time. We are the Fae Kingdom. We love you. <laughs> That's amazing. This is amazing stuff. I, this is amazing. Uh, okay. Um, uh, I'll go, do you, we're, we've only, uh, okay. So we're not in any time. Okay. Let me see here. Uh, this one's from Catherine and she says, Catherine says, hi, man, Anne Marie, can I get a ring if time allows please? And she says, thank okay. you. All right, Catherine. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. All right. So right away, I am feeling that you are like, 
so connected already. And in such a way that I'm like, oh, to you. So you're not giving yourself enough credit. Vast, loving energy. So I'm feeling a very also another like vast ancient energy that dwells within you, that inhabits you. So in 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 honesty, I don't feel dense energy here. I feel like you are completely open and in tune with who you are. Your energy is again one of these ancient energies that is kind of like here to support, really here to make sure that we don't. <laughs> I'm going to say it because it popped up. Fuck up again. <laughs> So you're here to make sure that humanity doesn't fall again. And it's beautiful. Uh, again, like I'm like going, oh, I'm not worthy kind of feeling that I get from this energy that's, that you have within you, honey. I hope it resonates with you. But yeah, you're, you're pretty awesome. That's what I feel. Wow. Okay. We'll do, we'll do, <laughs> this is great. I will do one more and i sorry we couldn't get to everybody tonight, but we, you know, like I don't want to burn Anna Marie out and I don't want to, you know, I got another show to do after this. So, but there, this is from Nick P 74. He says, Hey Rob, I love your show. I listen every night. Does she have any messages for myself and my daughter, Sophia? Much gratitude and okay. much love. Rob and Sophia. Thank you, Rob and Sophia. Cause no, no, his name's Nick. Nick and Sophia. Oh, sorry, Nick. Nick and Sophia. Sorry about that. That's okay. 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 I'm feeling that your energies together, um, yeah. Let me just tap in a little bit more. So yeah, it's a very, very special relationship, kind of a you and me against the world kind of thing, whether it be because of your belief systems, whether it be because of your actual physical situation with each other, like it's just the two of you or whatever, I, I don't know. But I'm feeling like what a, a, a really, really deep and special relationship that you're going to have. So uh, for Sophia, so for Sophia, what I'm getting for her is do not be afraid to live and love. Do not be afraid to live and love. Just go out there and live your life. Here on earth, we're meant to fall and skin our knees. That's how we learn. Okay. That's how we learn. So you as dad, allow her to fall and skin her knees. It's important. Allow her to have this earthly experience. And sometimes it's going to require a great deal of detachment. When you have a relationship with a child that you love so much and you want to protect and you want to wrap and bubble wrap, you know, so that they don't hurt themselves, that's contrary to the agreements of coming to this planet. So you're here in order to skin your knees and learn, but you have a beautiful, very beautiful relationship with each other. I don't feel anything dense, but that's kind of what I'm feeling um, from her point of view. So allow her to love, to live, to experience, to do whatever it is that she needs to do for her soul's growth. And remember, nothing is really wrong. Okay, and we don't understand that. We think because we judge in terms of right and wrong, good, bad, you know, that's, that's duality. That's where we are. But in truth, even the most awful thing is the best thing. Okay, that, that's, that's the big messages that I'm getting from you guys. 
Yeah, but that, but this has been amazing. We've been going about an hour. I'd love to. I just want to say I'd love to have you back on again. This was. Oh, I thought this yeah. was really good. Everybody enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, and I think everybody uh -huh. got like a good um, message from it. You know, I, it was very uplifting. People are saying, and very, uh, you know, you're very true to yourself, and you have a real talent. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. I'll come back anytime. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you want to tell everybody how they can um, book a reading again with you and, and, and everything? And thank you so much. Sure. Absolutely. So you can go to my website, annemarietheartofhealing.com. And there you will be able to communicate with me and uh, we'll work something out. And don't forget to mention typical skeptic. I'll be giving you 10% off. And I'd appreciate a sub over at my YouTube channel. Um, I am, I always uh, teach from my life experience and I teach from, um, that's always been uh, how I teach. So go over there and give me a sub. I appreciate it. Yeah. And I actually, I listed both of those in the description guys. So her website's in the description and her YouTube's in the description. And uh, just on my end, I'm going to be live again in about five minutes here. I, I just didn't announce it because I wasn't sure if I was going to do it live, but I'm probably going to do it live. So I'll be live in, in about five minutes. Just check my channel and you'll get a notification. And thank you guys. I'll see you in a couple minutes. Take care, everybody. Have a good night.